No hatred behind that. I don't hate nobody. My wife was with me. I said, I said to him, I got on the phone. I said, listen, you hold on. Don't you die before I get there. I'm coming. Pam and I got in the car and raced over to wake me. In those days, you had to dress almost like an astronaut before you could go in the room. Put everything on you. You remember what I'm talking about? We walked into the room and there he lay. All of his homosexual buddies were in the room. His life bleeding, oozing out of him. And uh, when we walked in, we went straight to his bedside. I called his name and I said, hey, I'm here. Don't you die. I'm here. Here to pray for you. We love you. And his friends, we didn't put them out. But they left as soon as I started praying. And that's up. All that death in there, and they, they didn't want prayer. Living the same lifestyle. You see your future. You see where you're headed if you don't change. And they still didn't want prayer. Something's wrong. But I wasn't there for them no way. So I went back to praying for the young man. And I said, God, heal his body. God, touch him. God, raise him up right now. And God, the Holy Ghost, spoke to me and said, pray not for his body. You pray for his soul. God says, I'm not going to heal him. I let him hang on. See, God loves us for his soul. So I began to pray for his soul. And Pam was right there. And we prayed. And uh, when we finished the prayer, I'm headed somewhere. He inhaled. He exhaled. And he never inhaled again. I believe he's somewhere around the throne. I believe God loved him. God spared him. And if you could go to the city where he's from, I almost named it, the only thing that speaks to his existence, the only thing that says he was ever on earth is a little mound of dirt. Not even a headstone. You know, one of those cheap ones they put in the ground, little thing, you know, they ain't designed to last but 30 days. That's about it. Just a little mound. That's all that's left. What does that have to do with this? You know it's got to have something to do with it, right? He had told me before he got sick before, and before he rebelled. That's how he got in trouble. He rebelled. He rebelled against the truth. Knowledge puffs up. He rebelled. Pastor Wooden preaching about this and that, but I got my condom in my back pocket. Bam. But he didn't know by the time he said that, it was in his blood. Rebel. Rebellion is the sin of witchcraft. But he told me this. He said, the way I got into this, he was not a big man. He was small of stature. And I want to say to the guys, whether you're a big man or a little man, it ain't the size of the man. It's the size of the fight that's in the man. See, you don't need height. You don't need size to fight. All you need to do is just be a man. Don't let nobody turn you out. Don't let nobody mess with you. And then, then tell us. We'll get them. He said I was small. Parents, please pay attention to your children. And see, and see, this is why we need to protect the culture of the church. 
Not everybody's got a mom and daddy. Not everybody's got parents who care about them. Not everybody, not everybody's come up in a good home. What about those people? What about them? And they come to the church and they get saved. What about them? So we, we are stuck on stupid. We're letting everything in. This woman is telling our girls to be hoes, get all tatted up, be thotties. But there are girls in your church, ma'am. There are girls in your church, bishop. There are girls in your church, superintendent.